Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, Artistic Director and Founder of Vocal Essence and Organist Choir Master at Plymouth Congregational Church in Minneapolis. Each day I've selected a composer that's had a role to play with both organizations. Today it is the great English composer Sir William Walton. I think I first heard about Walton back in the 1970s. I was at Minnesota Opera. We were asked to do a concert at the old Guthrie Theater. And part of that concert was a piece, Vern Sutton was the soloist, and it was a piece called Facade, a set of poems for speaker with a small little ensemble of six players. And I loved it. Wonderful patter songs. It sort of was like rap before there was rap. And the words were by Edith Sitwell. So of course I had to go find out more about her and about William Walton. I have to tell you, if you have a chance, find this original recording, which had as two speakers, Sir Peter Piers and Edith Sitwell. Peter Piers did all the fast songs, all the fast texts, and it was Edith Sitwell who did the more languid kind of pieces, but it's a fabulous recording. So I found out that uh, Walton, early on, had become friends with the Sitwell family. There was Edith Sitwell, and then her brother, Osbert, and then the other brother, Sacheverell. And Sacheverell, Osbert, and Edith lived in London, and they invited, they were very wealthy, they had a big place, and they invited Walton to live there, which he did for about 15 years. Uh, at the age of 15, one of his first pieces that he composed was a piece called A Litany, words by Phineas Fletcher. And I've always been taken by it because it's wonderful, interesting harmonies uh, around this chord. But how you get to that chord, and this is the beginning of that piece when the words were drop, 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 slow tears, and you can hear that dropping. wonderful modulatory sense about it. And when it comes to the very end and that theme comes back, So I became interested in Walton and his music. And of course, he wrote a number of fabulous symphonies, a great concerto for solo viola, another one for solo violin and orchestra. And then he wrote a piece based on words of W.H. Auden called The Twelve, an anthem for the feast of any apostle. It begins big and clamorous, sort of like what uh, Walton did when he composed Belshazzar's Feast. And in the middle of it is this beautiful soprano duet. If you have a chance to find two excellent sopranos, do this wonderful little piece with the text, O Lord, my God, though I forsake thee, forsake me not.
and then the other soprano comes in. choir re-enters, and then there is a fabulous fugue for the choir and the organ to close it. Well, that's one side of Walton, but he also wrote grand festival marches. In 1939, I'm sorry, 1937, he was asked to write a march for the coronation of George VI. And uh, he wrote, well, one of the great marches of all time. Actually, I'm going to play it for you on the organ. It's much more thrilling than playing it just on the piano. He also, in 1953, for Queen Elizabeth's coronation, was asked to write, and he wrote another coronation march called Orb and Scepter. But one of the great things about Crown Imperial, the earlier one, is that you have this big fanfare music and you can just imagine uh, there as the uh, royal wedding party came into Westminster Abbey, a great throw, but then suddenly it slows down, as you'll hear on the organ, for this grand conclusion and then in comes the king. Music of William Walton. Have a wonderful day.